Um, as uh, you mentioned, tomorrow is a weekly session. I hold tutorials each Wednesday morning for people who have taken the Hidden Pivot webinar. Uh, that's a six-hour course. The next one is coming up on the 3rd and 4th of November. But uh, the Wednesday sessions are in real time, and we're trying to pick trades. We're actually trying to come away from these sessions with things to do when we leave the actual sessions. So uh, over the next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to introduce you to the Hidden Pivot Method. Uh, it's a proprietary system for trading and forecasting that I have been honing and using for the last 15 years. And although we'll only be touching on some of the basics today, I'm going to teach you one very simple trick right away using a chart formation known as the impulse leg. You're about to discover how you can significantly improve your risk management skills as well as your ability to predict and trade trend reversals. Um, let me say a few things about myself. Uh, as Robin mentioned, I was a PSE floor trader for about a dozen years, and uh, I am currently a guru by way of the Rick's Picks daily service, which gives uh, each day a commentary that could be about anything, but also some trading touts, which are generally actionable um, actionable things that you can do in the various vehicles that we like to trade. Uh, I'm a principal and a trader in a company called Bluefin Financial, and my two partners, John Boudiette and Steve Houck, are students of mine from a seminar I gave a long, long while back in New York. Our affinity was the hidden pivot system, and we apply the hidden pivot method to trade uh, as a CTA. Uh, I've been putting out Rick's picks since around 1994. My background before that and before trading even was as a newspaper reporter, and I've kind of come back to my roots. I occasionally write for the financial press. Now, we are going to look at uh, just a few key concepts today, and as I mentioned, I want you to come away from this session with at least one or two really good tricks that you can use to hit the ground running, so to speak. But let's look at the three ideas that we're going to be examining today, uh, the impulse leg, midpoint pivots, and camouflage. Now, impulse legs, this is a kind of schematic that shows the impulse legs, uh, not all of them, but this is a pretty good selection, and uh, it shows how some trend changes begin with strong impulse legs and others begin with not so strong impulse legs. But uh, as you're going to see, these impulse leg formations are useful not only for forecasting but for trading as well. Uh, another concept that we'll look at is the midpoint pivot. It comes from uh, my own work over the last 15 years. And it's a point along an ABCD pattern that you're about to see shortly that is um, very essential. It's a, a piece of price action that you'll find on any chart that gives you quite a bit of useful information for both trading and forecasting. And this midpoint, just to put it here in front of you, is simply the P, the midpoint of the CD leg of an ABCD pattern. And this is the pattern that we use in all of our forecasting and trading uh, applications. It's simply, uh, as you see, ABCD D, where A to B is what we call the impulse leg. BC is the corrective phase. CD is the follow through. And once again, that point P is simply the midpoint of CD. And we find P simply by taking the length of AB and dividing it in half and taking that number and adding it to C. Uh, the third concept that we're going to look at just a little bit is called camouflage. And camouflage is really the sum total of everything that I've learned. It's uh, something that I've worked with in intensively only for the last uh, oh, year or so, and it has become more and more a point of uh, emphasis in the Hidden Pivot webinar that I give each month. So uh, mainly, 
using camouflage is uh, the art of taking this A, B, C, D pattern and finding the most likely place for a trend change to occur, but to actually do the trade to take advantage of, of your knowledge of that trend reversal point using charts of a very minor degree. All right, and uh, this chart, we're going to come back to this as well, but it shows an instance where camouflage has been signaled by uh, this peak that's shown at 17.83. Now, you'll notice that it's just a few hundredths of a point above a prior peak that occurred at 17.80. And as you'll see, uh, in camouflage, just a couple hundreds of points or even thousands make all the difference. Now, many of us have had this come on baby moment when we trade. Uh, you find a place to trade through whatever method. It might be oscillators, it might be relative strength indicators. But uh, once you've done that, the, the next step, of course, is to pull the trigger to actually do the trade. And uh, it's difficult to come to that moment without some trepidation, nervousness, or anxiety. But as you are going to see, using hidden pivots and the camouflage technique, you'll be able to greatly reduce the stress, stress of the moment. And I find that uh, the camouflage method is a great way to ramp up your, your trading if you have that, uh, if you suffer from triggeritis, the inability to pull the trigger on a trade. Why do hidden pivots work? Well, I can't tell you scientifically why, but I know having looked at many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of charts over the last couple of decades, that there's a certain rhythm to the way prices go up and down. And just as uh, you inhale and exhale, and ultimately both must be equal, in the process of tracing out price action on a chart, a stock manifests many jiggles and jaggles. There's a certain yin-yang energy present there. And you'll find, if you look closely at charts uh, of all different time frames, that the jiggles are somehow matched up with jaggles, so that everywhere you have a jiggle on a chart, there's a corresponding jaggle somewhere else. And it is the visual process of matching jiggles and jaggles that gives us what I've called, come to call the hidden pivot method. So uh, the art of finding these patterns is really uh, hidden pivotry. And I learned this technique, or I taught it to myself uh, as an English major. I'm not a math guy. And uh, I've come to look at charts not so much for support and resistance and channels and oscillators and things like that. I like to look at a painting as a piece of art and uh, in doing so to see in price action elements of symmetry and harmony and even occasionally beauty. So those are the things that I look for in a chart and I try to uh, wean my students away from this idea of looking at all the rules and applying them and, and trying to get everything right on every trade. It's almost like developing a golf swing. You know, if you look at a book and you read Ben Hogan on golf and you look at the diagrams, if you're standing there trying to drive a ball yourself and thinking of all those arrows pointing every which way, uh, the alignment of your shoulders and your feet and everything else, it's much harder to swing the club and, and, and hit the ball. So ultimately, I want to get my students away from the rules and to really take in the sweep of a, of a chart, to look at it and kind of see the ABCD-ness, if I may, of the price action. So uh, I want you to come to charts with the eye of an artist, you might say. All right, now once again, this is that basic pattern, ABCD. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have simply... Uh, an AB impulse leg. Uh, we also have uh, a pullback from B to C, and we have this secondary leg, a CD, a follow through leg. And we're going to delve into this just a little bit further. Uh, let me show you a full 
this is basically all of the bells and whistles connected with ABCDs. Now, this particular chart uh, shows all of the price information that's relevant to a trading system called Lindsay's Trident. Uh, Charles Lindsay uh, developed a trading system in the early 1970s, and Larry Williams worked with him to actually uh, teach Lindsay's method in seminar form. And uh, it was an expensive afternoon. It was a uh, one-day seminar for, I think, 3000 bucks. And I'm going to quickly go over the main ideas of Lindsay's Trident, uh, just so that you can understand what it is. Uh, again, as we saw in those very simplified charts, we have an A-B impulse leg, a B-C correction, and a C-D follow-through. Now, of course, you're seeing all of this after it's already happened, but if we were using Trident to trade and to forecast, it would be unfolding uh, so that we wouldn't see anything to the right of our cursor. So with Lindsay's Trident, the idea was that once you had an impulse leg, you needed some type of corrective movement uh, to end the impulse leg, and that's the BC correction. According to Lindsay, the BC pullback had to be equal to at least 0.618 of this AB segment to get you into the window where a point C low could, could form. And once you were in the window, once you'd pulled back, uh, the, the impulse leg had given way to some kind of pullback that got you into that window. If you rallied from a low in the window, a distance of 25% of AB, in this case, that would be seven and a half points. Then you got to the entry price, the, I call it an X trigger, and you would get long at that E. You would put your stop loss below C and you would ride them cowboy. You'd get to the midpoint of CD, and of course, to to 